This is the last chapter of The Decline of the West, Chapter 14, The Form World of Economic Life, Letter B, The Machine. It's a very short chapter. It's, it's the shortest in the entire book. It's less than 10 pages, uh, but it's pretty brilliant, I think, a pretty brilliant uh, survey of the gist of the essence of Faustian techniques. He says that Faustian technology is unique uh, in all the civilizations of the world um, in that it was invented by Gothic monks in the 12th and 13th centuries. And specifically, we think of Gothic monks such as Petrus Peregrinus and Albertus Magnus and Vitello and Roger Bacon. Already in Roger Bacon's writings, we can see him uh, forecasting the entire evolution of the coming of Faustian technology. He's talking about steamships already, submarines, airplanes, all of these things that will come. And you can already see these men fascinated by this. Uh, they played it. They were fascinated with optics and lenses. They invented the mechanical clock. They were fascinated with properties of light and magnetism, and so forth. And um, they created the idea of the machine. Spangler says as the idea of a microcosm, uh, whereas the the macrocosm had been thought of in those days as being uh, the Earth in the center of a machine of cosmic whirling spheres created by God as a sort of gigantic machine. Uh, the priest of the machine here, in a literal sense, at the beginning of the civilization, created the machine as a microcosm uh, that he could master in the same way that God had mastered the macrocosm of the planetary spheres. And so it was a little machine, and just as according to Buridan's impetus theory, God had, set, had kicked those spheres and set them in motion, and because there is no friction or air resistance in outer space, those spheres have kept turning and will keep turning forever, that's the early Gothic version of the first law of motion, the law of inertia. Uh, so too, the central myth that these Gothic monks were trying to actualize was the myth of perpetual motion, which is an impossible, unattainable limit. But it was the limit, the idea, the myth that they were trying to actualize in these machines, and that, according to Spangler, we have been trying to actualize ever since. This is what lies behind our etherealization of machines. They run smoother and smoother over time. They're less and less noisy. They're lighter. Uh, and this is a process of etherealization, the, the, the tendency to try to approximate and approach and accomplish perpetual motion, according to Spangler. And he says there's always been something of the devil about this. All cultures have rightly felt that there's something devilish about the mastery of technology and the machine. And he says that the Faust myth comes right out of this. The initial essence of the Faust myth was that the one who is in league with the machine has made a devil, has made a deal with the devil to sell his soul for the knowledge, uh, for the mastery of techniques to achieve mastery over the earth. And Spangler says that Faustian man is the first is the first time in history when a microcosm has actually attained mastery over the macrocosm. And so what we've done with Faustian technology is we've, we've performed an act. We have uh, shrunk the macrocosm, nature down, and expanded and gigantified the human world so that it has got larger and larger and larger. And today now we're living in the age of gigantic technologies, technologies which have encompassed and surrounded the earth in a gigantic exoskeleton to such a degree that it is now inter it, it is impossible to see where nature ends and where the machine begins. We don't know nowadays if we have earthquakes like the 2008 earthquake in Sichuan, the Sichuan earthquake in China that was apparently caused by uh, the weight in, in, of the reservoir in Three Gorges Dam, uh, the weight of the water on the fault line there. Actually, it was at Zipingku Dam. Um, the weight of the water on the fault line may have caused that earthquake. We don't know anymore when earthquakes occur, tornadoes occur, uh, the hurricane that drowned uh, Hurricane Katrina in 2005 that drowned New Orleans and seems to have been uh, exacerbated to gigantic proportions as the direct result of global warming. And, and 2005 is one of the hottest years on record. We don't know where nature begins and where Faustian technology ends anymore. So the very idea of um, natural catastrophe, uh, the very word, the term natural catastrophe, seems no longer to have any relevance whatsoever. There is no such thing any, anymore as a natural catastrophe. All catastrophes nowadays seem to be man-made, which is, uh, by the way, the thesis of the book that I have coming out later this year called The Age of Catastrophe. Uh, that'll be out later this year from McFarland, so you can check on Amazon by... It'll be just in time for Christmas. So that'll make a nice stocking stuffer for for some of you. And so um, I want to read this one paragraph, which is my favorite in all of Spangler, where he describes the conquest of the earth by the machine. He says, uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> this is the outward and upward straining life feeling, true descendant, therefore, of the Gothic, as expressed in Goethe's Faust monologue when the steam engine was still young. The intoxicated soul wills to fly above space and time, and ineffable longing tempts him to indefinable horizons. Man would free himself from the earth, rise into the infinite, leave the bonds of the body, and circle in the universe of space amongst the stars. That which the glowing and soaring inwardness of St. Bernard sought at the beginning, that which Grunewald and Rembrandt conceived in their backgrounds, and Beethoven in the transearthly tones of his last quartets, comes back now in the intellectual intoxication of the inventions that crowd one upon another. Hence the fantastic traffic that crosses the continents in a few days, that puts itself across oceans and floating cities, that bores through mountains, rushes about in subterranean labyrinths, uses the steam engine till its last possibilities have been exhausted, and then passes on to the gas engine, and finally raises itself above the roads and railways and flies in the air. Hence it is that the spoken word is sent in one moment over all the oceans. Hence comes the ambition to break all records and beat all dimensions, to build giant halls for giant machines, vast ships and bridge spans, buildings that deliriously scrape the clouds, fabulous forces pressed together to a focus to obey the hand of a child, stamping and quivering and droning works of steel and glass in which tiny man moves as unlimited monarch and at the last feels nature as beneath him. That's a grand uh, synopsis of the Faustian conquest of the earth with these machines. But then he comes to his final point, and he says here that in doing this, in creating this, Faustian man has now become the slave of his own creation. Um, work, uh, traditionally the word work and the idea of work has, in most civilizations, had a kind of odious uh, association to it, but it lost that odious association in the 18th century when it became connected with the rise of the Industrial Revolution and the invention of the factory worker. Spengler says that the three new archetypes that the machine world of Faustian man invented are uh, the entrepreneur, the engineer, the entrepreneur, the engineer, and the factory worker to be added to the older archetypes of the farmer, the merchant, and the, the, the hand craftsman. And that these are the engineer is the most important of them. He is the priest of the machine. The entrepreneur depends entirely upon his mastery of the machine and its creation. Uh, and But the problem is now that both of these men, uh, the engineer and the entrepreneur, and along with it, the, all the workers who serve these machines, are now servants of the machine, which has captured and encompassed the human soul, which is now so entangled up with it that it needs to be extracted from it. Uh, you can't tell, like in an H.R. Giger painting, where the human world ends, where the actual physical body ends, and where the machine begins. Uh, the jet man, as Roland Barthes writes about in his essay on the jet man, actually disappears into the machinery of his jet. You can't tell where he begins and where the machine, where the machine, where he ends and where the machine takes off from him. Uh, so this is an image. It's basically a Gnostic myth, and I've discussed this in my second book on celluloid heroes and mechanical dragons. It's a Gnostic myth of the in Gnosticism. The idea was that the soul had been fallen or had fallen into the body and was caught and captured in the body and longed for escape and release from that back to the pleroma, the world of spiritual light. That myth has now been updated by the Faustian conquest of the earth with the idea that the human being now has fallen into the machine and has become caught and captured by it and is in need of either rescue from without or finding his own way out of the labyrinth. And in my book, Celluloid Heroes and Mechanical Dragons, I wrote about how all these movies in Hollywood, starting with 2001 A Space Odyssey, on through the Star Wars films, Blade Runner, Alien, down through uh, contemporary films like, you know, even the weaker ones like Pandorum, uh, better ones like Dark City, or any, any of them based on a Philip K. Dick novel, are all dealing with the myth of the machine and attempts on the part of the psyche, which is obviously very troubled by it, our cultural productions, our popular culture, cinema, film, comic books, graphic novels, are all more or less waking nightmares that show that uh, the collective mind of Western civilization is having nightmares about its machines and is very much troubled by the fact that it has fallen into them and can't seem to find a way out. This is a unique myth in the history of civilization. No other civilization has had this problem, and none of them have, uh, have created myths uh, that have tried to work this out the way our films have obsessively reiterated this over and over again. When you get an image, as you do in James Cameron's uh, Terminator movies, or in uh, George Lucas's uh, Star Wars films, where you have machine homicidal robots bent on eliminating human beings from the planet, 
we're about to get Steven Spielberg's Robo, Robopocalypse coming up in 2013, which is an updating of the same theme, then you have the psyche trying to communicate to us that, it, that there's a real problem here. The body is undergoing a sub, at a subliminal level, unbeknownst to our waking consciousness. It, it's, it's terrified about what's happening, and it's sending us these messages in a kind of oracular dream form to try to wake us up and to realize that we're, we're captured here. We have fallen into the machine as the classical soul and Gnosticism have fallen into the body, and we need to find some sort of way out from this. Now, uh, Spangler in this chapter suggests that the way out will simply come by the fact that uh, this can only last for a few centuries, and eventually it will fade and become forgotten. Faustian technics will die with Faustian civilization. It isn't here. It's not something permanent. It's not something that, even though it appears that other cultures and third world cultures uh, have taken up the machine, it, it doesn't matter for them. It's not a spiritual inward necessity as the way it is for us the way it is for us, and it will die with Faustian civilization. It will not outlast it. So he gives it a couple more centuries at best. And he says that the Russians in particular, with their basically peasant mentality and their spring, with the springtime awakening where they're at now, will learn to forget the machine, that they will deliberately forget. Uh, and we can look forward to, as Russia awakens, some equivalent of a future crusade uh, against the machine coming out of the West. Um, that's all very interesting. I think those are those are pretty interesting insights. So Spangler sees the the solution coming, just in the fact that eventually uh, the machine will be forgotten and there will be a turning toward uh, the productions of the spirit world uh, with the coming of the second religiousness, which is the uh, religious equivalent of the political formation of Caesarism. There will come a time when men will become more interested in the salvation of their soul than in the laying out of diagrams and blueprints. And when that happens, there will be a turning away from the machine as the intellect turns toward uh, the metaphysical realm and the beyond on direct analogy with the rise of Christianity, which became more in the classical world interested in the soul's salvation and turned away from the realm of the intellect and learning and set about with the destruction of the library at Alexandria and the murder of mathematicians like Hypatia uh, and so forth. We're looking ahead at that. So Spangler sees that the process will be a natural extermination of, of the machine from within as more and more Western intellects turn away from it, uh, become more and more interested in the spirit world, the irrational, the occult, astrology, everything that will lead up to the second religiousness and that will apocalyptically disintegrate uh, the mechanical mentality. This should happen by, uh, I think, roughly 2200, I think is the date that he's got for that. So that's uh, Spangler's Decline of the West, uh, two volumes. And you can already see him moving into his next book here, which is called Man and Technics, which came out in 1931, and which really is the first book ever written on technology and the abstract. I already did a series of videos on that book, which is a very short 100-page book. Uh, so you can go to those videos next if you want to go into a chronological sequence uh, following this. Um, and he is really the first to begin to think, I think, about the machine. And, and already by 1920 here, this is even before Heidegger's being in time in 1927, he's really one of the first to begin to start thinking about the machine as, as a serious problem uh, for civilization and, uh, and nature. So that's uh, Decline of the West, uh, Volumes 1 and 2.